Good morning, almost good afternoon. Yeah, good morning. It's 11, 1157, according to the car. Almost good afternoon. Good morning to each and every one of you. Hey, Melinda. Hey, Melinda. Sorry that I didn't get back to you. It's been a, it was a crazy day yesterday. Crazy, crazy, crazy day yesterday. And so all day yesterday, I was inundated. So I pray that you got home safely. God bless you, Lauren, Lisa, um, and those names that I did not see. Mother Angela, God bless you. God bless each and every one of you. It's 1158. It's still morning. God bless you. I pray that you guys are having a blessed and marvelous day. Um, I pray that you guys are healthy and strong. We are approaching a new year. Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful that we are approaching a new year. Um, such a beautiful thing and and I pray that this time right now oh you just landed okay good thank God for traveling mercies amen um, um, I pray that this time that we have between now and the new year would be an opportunity for us as people of God to sort of get our minds together to get our hearts together you know yeah, Christina, good morning, afternoon. We got one more minute left in this morning, um, you know, before the afternoon approaches. And so we thank God for his, his many blessings. But, you know, now more than ever, we need to spend our time cleaning up our homes, cleaning up our minds, cleaning up our hearts, cleaning up our souls. Um, we need to spend more time, you know, cleaning up um, everything that we do. Why? Because time is too short. Time is too short and we need to get ourselves together. We need to really get ourselves together. We really need to, as a people of God, to become organized and to become, you know, just filled with, you know, the grace and the glory of God, you know, filled with his praises. You know, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I don't think, as I mentioned last night, I don't think a lot of the scriptures that we read, we really understand the background of what those scriptures mean, right? <laughs> right? When you look at, when David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, he wasn't talking about that. I got a raise and I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. No, 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 no. All hell was breaking out in David's life. Chaos was in David's life. And David made a declaration that even in this, I'm going to bless the Lord. Even in this stuff. And so if you're going to use that scripture, use it when things are not going well. Use it when somebody's getting on your nerve. Use it when uh, things don't go your way. Right? Use it when everything is topsy-turvy and upside down. Then you can say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Right? Because it is then that you really understand the strength of that scripture. It is then that you really understand the power of that scripture. That David is saying that in spite of it all. In spite of it all. That's what the psalmist says. In spite of it all, I will praise the Lord, right? In spite of it all, I'll lift my hands. In spite of it all, I'll do my dance. In spite of it all, I will bless his name, right? You, you got to have that mindset that this is what, speaking of another psalmist, he said, he says, praise is what I do. Even when I'm going through, I'll lift or I'll bless the Lord at all times. He says, I vow to praise you in the good and in the bad. I'll praise you when I'm happy and when I'm sad. I'll praise you in all that I go through. Why? Because praise 
is what I do. It's not just a song. It can't be just a song for us. It's got to be more than a song. It's got to be your testimony that this is what I'm going to do because I was designed to praise him. I was made to praise him. I was made to give him glory. I was made to worship his name. And listen, the devil wants to muzzle you. The devil wants to muzzle you. He wants to put a muzzle on your mouth. He wants to get you more concerned about what you don't have than what you do have. The devil wants to um, mess with your mind as it relates to more of what people are saying about you uh, versus what God said about you, right? You've got to know that you know that you know. You got to really come to the place to say, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praises are going to continually be in my mouth. You got to give God glory in everything. You got to worship him in spirit and in truth. And you got to say, you know, Lord, I'm hurting right now, but God, I'm going to still give you glory. God, I'm angry right now, but I'm going to still give you glory. God, I'm mad right now, but I'm going to still give you glory. God, uh, I don't know if our ends are going to make, but uh, uh, my ends are going to meet, but I'm, I'm going to still give you glory. God, I don't know if things are going to work out for me, but guess what? I'm going to still give you glory while I have breath in my body, right? Because that's what you got to have. You got to have that almost desperation and the enemy don't want you. The enemy wants you to become desperate, but he don't want you to be desperate before God. David says, as the, 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 the lamb or as the sheep thirst after water, right? As the deer thirst after water. So my soul longs after you. You got to have that mindset. And listen, y'all talking to a brother who've been through some things. And in the midst of everything that I've been through, I'm trying to keep my praise. I'm trying to ask God, Lord, keep my praise. Keep me praising you in everything, in every situation, in every circumstance. Keep me praising you. Keep me lifting up your name because you know what? He deserves all my praise. I love in the church when I'm in the church, I love singing that song that says, all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. I love singing that song because of the fact of that it's not just a song. It's not just something that, you know, I like to sing or that I can sing. No, because you know, singers generally go to their song of choice, things that they sound good in, right? But I don't sing it because of that. I sing it because of the fact that's my testimony. My testimony is all the glory belongs to God. All the glory. You know, the enemy tries. Y'all know that, right? The enemy will try you, right? People will try you. But guess what? You, because you tried Jesus, you got to praise. Because, because you tried the Lord, you got to praise. The word of God says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And once you have tasted of him, right? The word of God said, it is impossible that once you have tasted of that heavenly gift and have partaken of the powers that is to come, it is impossible for you to turn away from it as if nothing ever happened. You know, you got to have that mindset that says, you know what, God, I'm going to give you praise. Even in this, even in this moment, even in this time, I'm going to give you glory. So make no mistake about it. Right. Because I have a praise doesn't mean that everything is good because I have a praise doesn't mean everything is going my way. But guess what? My praise is indicative of my testimony. My praise is indicative of what I believe and what I stand for. My praise is indicative of my father who is on the throne. My praise is indicative of my God has been good. You know, like the psalmist says, Lord, you are good. You are better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough even if I try because you've been so good to me, right? When you look at that, you understand that if God has been good to you, why are you, why are you discouraged? Why are you frustrated? Why are you aggravated? Why, David even said, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? He says, hope in God. See, when you know that God is good to you, then you just keep praising him. Even when things don't go your way, you keep praising him. Even when, even when frustration is abounding, you, you guess what? You still praise him. You just magnify him even more. 
you open up your mouth a little bit louder and you go a little bit further and you say, well, God, you're still worthy of all praise. You're still worthy of all glory. God, you're still worthy of my honor. God, you're still worthy of everything. Why? Because the Lord is good. That's what the word of God says. It says, the Lord is good and his mercy endures to all generations. And so this morning, I just, or rather now this afternoon, I just wanted to take a few moments to really encourage you to praise God and spend these last last couple of days, last couple of days, um, just really clearing out the junk, anything that weighs on your heart, anything that weighs on your spirit, anything that um, causes for you to feel some kind of way, you know, let that stuff go. Let that stuff go. Let that stuff go. Ask God for the deliverance. Ask God for the power. Ask God for the victory to let that stuff go, right? Because we don't want no weights. That's why the word of God says, wherefore seeing that we are Oh, yeah, Michelle. I love that song. You're a good, good father. Yes, yes. Love it. Um, and so, yeah, you, you want to, the word of God says, wherefore, seeing that we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily trip us up. And let us run with patience the rest the race that is set before us looking unto jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the father right the word of god says consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest you faint and be weary in your minds so see, you got you to gotta consider what Jesus went through or else you'll be discouraged. You'll be discouraged and you'll be frustrated. You'll be going through something and you'll be like, wow, I don't know if I could take this because, you know, I'm going through too much. But then when you look at what Jesus went through, now you realize, guess what? I can make it. You realize I can make it. I can make it through this. I can make it through this storm. Why? Because if Jesus went through what he went through and he came through, so can I. When he rose from the dead with all power in his hands, he's given that power to you and I. So guess what? We can get through it. We can get through it. So be encouraged, people of God. I love you all with the love of Christ. Have a blessed and marvelous day in Jesus' name. Keep me in your prayers. I love you real good. Um, tonight we'll be on at 7 p.m. for Bible study. So if you are available, please join with us. Pass the word around. Um, get yourself prepared and ready. Get your Bible, your pen, your pad, your notepad, your 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 laptop, whatever it is. You know, get get these things ready and put the kids. Make sure the kids done eight and make sure they done had their dessert so they're not bothering you. Mommy, I'm hungry. Daddy, I'm hungry. No, get them prepared for the word of God and gather together as we study the word of God tonight, 7 p.m. I love you all with the love of Christ. Have a blessed and marvelous day in Jesus' name. Keep me in your prayers. God bless you.